Okay, hello everyone. Huge crowd today. Thank you for waking up early. <laughs> so we're going to talk about quantum technology and frequency medicine today. How to improve blood, DNA, and ATP. That's not me. Okay, sounds good. And we'll basically go mainly through the science of it, the new findings. It's cutting edge technology and it's cutting edge finding that we're going to be talking about. Okay, so we're stretching between the woo woo and the science. Woo woo because we're not used to think of ourselves as energy and frequency, even though at core that's what we really are. Already Tesla said that a long time ago, if you want to understand the secrets of the universe, you need to think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And you see energy technologies, frequency medicine popping up in various areas right now. There's huge MIT projects in regards to sound frequency and sound healing. We have heard about the specific Hertz frequencies that can promote specific changes in the brain and put us into a deep rest state, for example, or in a wake-up state. But then there's also other frequencies, etheric frequencies, molecular frequencies. So we have developed the technology that can imprint pure quantum energy into any object and we also work with all kinds of different frequencies where we combine this technology with these frequencies to promote changes why is that even working because we're energy and frequency to begin with so if you think about it on a molecular level i'm over 99 percent water over 90%, sorry, over 90%, and you are too. But over 99% were all space. It's not, we're not really aware of that. That space, though, isn't empty. It's filled with pure quantum energy. That's the energy behind the matter. Each cell contains a quantum field. If you ingest a vitamin C pill, it goes through the digestive tract, but what ends up in the core of the cell isn't the physical substance, it's the information of the vitamin C. So, we found a mechanism to actually distribute and provide frequencies in a way where you can leverage it without taking the actual physical. I don't have signal here. Okay, thank you. So very early on, we focused on research because we understood with a cutting edge technology that no one really understands yet because it's so new, you need science. You need doctors all over the world and labs and institutes looking into that and running trials. Um, and that's pretty much what happened. So far, there have been by now actually over 60 total studies that were conducted over 48 of those placebo controlled. The vast majority in the last year and a half randomized and double blind. So really gold standard studies. And there's tons more studies going on. Those are not studies that we conduct. It's studies that independent institutes, labs, doctor's offices, university labs conduct. And we'll get into that. One of those institutes is the Besa Institute out of Austria. They've tested um, EMF neutralization and harmonization. Um, they tested how the technology impacts the intake of food and water, um, neutralization of various toxic substances, uh, and way, way more. One study I wanted to highlight that the Base Institute just worked on, I think, five, six months ago, was in regards to electric cars, because electric cars are in everyone's mind right now. That's the new thing, right? Everyone needs to have one, it's substituted and all of that. It's not great to be in an electric car because the EMF exposure 
in an electric car is way, way higher than in a gas-operated car. And nowadays, even in a gas-operated car, you have more UMF exposure because of all the electronics that are built in. However, with, a, with an electric car, because of the battery and everything, it promotes even chronic migraines in, in a lot of people that drive in these cars over a longer period of times. And it's very easy to test, frankly, because you just need a EMF meter. You can get that for 100 bucks, And you go into the uh, electric car and you test it and then do the test when you drive for an hour because then the exposure actually gets higher and higher the longer you drive. And it's actually by far and large the highest when you charge the car. So if, if you have an electric car, you know, don't be mad right now that you have one. First of all, I'll show you how to mitigate that, uh, but also still, even if you can mitigate it, don't be in the car when you charge the car. So this is just a snapshot, really, of, of what happened. So in general, with all the test persons, there was a before test, and then there was a test being in an electric car. They tested various different situations, just being in an electric car for a few minutes, driving for an hour, what changes. Then, you know, you're driving and you're using your phone and you're driving, you're on your phone and you have a passenger that's also surfing in the web. And then, you know, what happens when the battery is charged. And in all cases, as, as soon as the second test was done, all the different organs, and here you see how granular they tested. They looked at each individual organ, the lungs, the intestines, the heart, uh, etc. All the organs go in deregulatory state with the EMF in the car. And this is actually here one of the best test persons we picked. He was quite healthy to begin with. And the changes, while they were detrimental already, weren't as bad as the other ones. So that would even go into the red. Now the next test that was done, then our technology got introduced. So for example, this block would be put into the car as one of the uh, test methods, but the exposure stayed 100% exactly the same. What happens within minutes, suddenly full regulatory action in all the different organs. So 100% of all the negative effects were neutralized, but even more, the results were better than the before test. Isn't that crazy? This was just a long-term study in regards to heel caps. So I don't have the time today to get into that. Uh, I wanna get into ATP production because we're here at the biohacking um, expo and a lot of that is about ATP production. What is ATP production? It's the energy production of the human cells. It's your currency basically of your body. We can live without food for a while. We can live without water for less time. Without ATP production, we're dead pretty much instantly. And we need incredibly much ATP production when we have a mental performance, so we play a chess game, we study for school, you know, we have a test or physical performance. Obviously, professional athletes in their competition, they need to run on the highest ATP level possible. That's also why they're looking at everything pretty much that can get them another edge in regards to ATP production. So, there's a university lab and a professor uh, in the U.S. at the University of Tulsa, one of the guys that knows the most about this whole topic because since several decades he has not been doing and teaching anything else but looking at cell cultures, human cell cultures, and how you can improve ADP production, how you can measure it, how you can improve wound healing, um, and what the effects are, and so on. He's a mainstream professor, so the concept of a technology like ours that that would work was difficult for him to understand at first so he said okay i i can run these studies but <laughs> you know i don't have any hopes that this will work and we said that's okay you know we've we've heard that before and uh, then it was set up randomized and double blind so that means that not even the professor knew 
which was the control group and which wasn't, so that was revealed after. And we also, of course, had no idea. And uh, so what happened is that he saw a, a huge increase in ATP production in all the treated cells, and they didn't see that in the control cells. Now, already the first study was completely statistically significant because it was done with millions of cells. So they had so-called 96 cell wells in the... Uh, in the control group and 96 cell wells in the treated group and each of those cell wells contain like hundreds of thousands of cells. And then he said, oh my God, this is working. I, I, but I need to do it again because a part of me is just needs to see it again. And, and we said, sure. Uh, so it was done again, same results. And then he said, okay, I'm a full believer now. I'm even gonna tell my students about it. This is crazy, but before we publish it, I need to do it a third time because I want to make sure I cover my butt if, you know, when all the other professors look at this because this is new territory, right? So if you talk about that, you, you know, and you're mainstream, you, you want to cover your butt. So he did it a third time and again it came out 20 to 29% increase in ATP production. Dave Asprey, who wrote a whole book about ATP production, when he saw the results, he said, this is absolutely remarkable. You know, you can do these 10, 11 things, all invasive, and maybe get it to 20 to 25% increase, but that you can do this completely non-invasive with a press of a button, basically. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. So, this same professor then also ran two studies in regards to wound healing of actual human cells. And the way they do it there is they scratch the cells with a laser, and again, you have a control group, and then you have a treated group. And then you basically just wait and see how fast do these cells heal. And so it happened that there was an 85 to 100% acceleration in wound healing of all the treated cells, which actually blew my mind also, even though I knew it will work because we had seen so many personal results. We had anecdotal evidence from countless customers and so on, but it's, it's different if you have really a study running like that, and you're 85 to 100% is, is quite massive. The EGIF Institute out of Europe is the largest independent EMF uh, testing and research institute. And I just have this in here because they certified all of our products uh, in regards to the effects on EMF mitigation. There were EMF blocking studies done as well as a heart rate variability study that showed 100% improvement of the heart rate variability of all test persons that were affected negatively by EMF. Then lifeblood analysis is an interesting topic. In the US, not a lot of people know what that actually is because about 20 years ago, some organization out there in the US decided, mm, we're gonna just charge every practitioner that uses a dark field microscope for diagnostic purposes, $100,000 a year to use it. And um, that's when it really started to not be used that much anymore in the US. It still can be used by researchers though. So Dr. Beverly Rubik, who is the probably the most respected and most well-known um, practitioners in the US. She's been published UC Berkeley multiple times. Uh, she's been running these studies since a long time. She was introduced to me at some point and she was concerned about EMF and the effects on the blood in the, in the human body. And she saw that over time, the more Wi-Fi exposure we have and we're rolling out 4G and now 5G, that the blood looks worse each year when she looks in these studies. Then I told her, we have a solution for this. And she said, well, this sounds intriguing. And I've seen your before and after pictures. That was already several years ago now. But, but that's not enough for me. Like, I, I can't believe that this really works. And I said, okay, so what would you need for this to work? I have to set up a gold standard study. It needs to be blind, blinded, it needs to be shame controlled. And then I can tell. And I said, okay, 
can you do that? And then she did, and long story short, she called me after the first pilot study and said, oh my God, you have the solution for this. This works 100% of the cases. Now, granted, that was a very small study with just four test persons, but then she ran multiple studies after that and took it to statistical significance, and we always saw exactly the same results. You see a baseline test, and this is not an extreme example. This is absolutely average of what we saw. Within The left one is without Wi-Fi exposure. Then you, you turn Wi-Fi on, and that's what your blood does. And I'm assuming that most of you are not experts in dark field microscopy and live blood analysis, but you probably have a weird feeling by looking at the picture in the middle. It does not look healthy, and actually this is blood clotting, what you're seeing there. Red blood cells sticking together to so-called money rolls. Higher risk for heart attack, stroke, heart disease, and all this good stuff. And by the way, the white blood cells are also paralyzed by EMF, or tend to be paralyzed. Now, the Wi-Fi exposure stayed on, then our technology got introduced, and the tests were done in various ways, putting the hands in, just having the block, just... Uh, 15, 20 yards away, uh, and in all cases, you see that within just 10 minutes, this is 10 minutes, Wi-Fi still on, the blood looks absolutely the way it's supposed to look, oxygenated, not clotted anymore. So stage one and stage two of blood clotting, which you see there, is reversed within 10 minutes. White blood cell activity motility increased, and actually even parasitic load in the blood decreased in one test person actually by 80 percent so this is crazy you may not understand how this works but we are energy and frequency and if we can be put into an optimal energetic state our body reacts it's also not the technology promoting the changes it is the human body promoting these changes because the body is suddenly in an environment where it is in full balance and optimal energetic state. Okay, we just have a couple of minutes left here, so that basically just shows the graph of you know, what she found. The Moto Institute is maybe the last study I wanna mention because the Moto Institute is quite famous for their work on water, and they tested our products and found that this technology is able to structure and optimize water faster and better than any other method and device they had ever tested before. And they've done this for decades now. And not only that, after the study was done, they requested a Zoom call with me and I saw, thought, okay, they are gonna just tell me about the results. That's what they did, but then they asked, can we distribute your products in Japan? And they had never done that before because it's a research lab and they're not selling products usually. So since about 20 months, the Moto Institute has been reselling our products on a regular basis. You know, I get on a Zoom call with Hiro Emoto, who is the son of the famous Masaru Emoto. And it, uh, it is quite, uh, quite fascinating. So I wanted to share a little bit more here about uh, autistic uh, children in India where we were able to decrease the attic score by 20 basis points. But now I'm wrapping up. Thank you very much for your attention. If you want to learn more about this, we have a booth, Leela Quantum Tech, relatively close, basically right next to the main stage. Uh, the team will be happy to talk to you. I'll be happy to talk uh, to you also. And yeah, thanks for your attention. and open your minds and you can actually also charge your phones uh, for free at our booth and maybe try out the technology. Thank you.